This is part one of a new series on how to establish a financial relationship with a bank to grow your business. This series is brought to you by Briefcase Essentials. My name is Susan Spencer, and this video is the first in a series of presentations where I will explain the importance of having a banking relationship and how to start one. During my business career, I frequently borrowed money to help grow one of my companies. As the VP, legal counsel, and GM of the Philadelphia Eagles, I met lots of bankers who were very friendly, but the minute you were looking to take out a loan, their attitude changed. Here's what happened to me. I was looking to find a bank that would lend the Eagles millions of dollars. The banks in Philadelphia had already turned us down. So I ended up in Phoenix, Arizona, still looking for money. I had an appointment with a large banking group and was a little intimidated when I arrived at the bank headquarters in downtown Phoenix. I looked at this huge modern skyscraper covered with large slabs of light blue tinkling glass that was illuminated by the sun, and it was impressive. I was a little scared. I took the elevator up to the top floor of the bank where I had an appointment to meet four of the bank's top banking officials. The door to this huge boardroom opens and I was ushered in. I looked around the room to get my bearings and saw four middle-aged men seated at a massive mahogany table. I was greeted with blank stares and lots of squirming in their seats. I immediately knew that they were not expecting a woman to represent the football team. And I also knew that they were uncomfortable talking to me about a big loan. So here's where it all starts. Presenting yourself to a banker. What do you need to do? How do you need to act? And how do you show them that you should be taken seriously? I began by walking over to each banker looking him squarely in his eyes, extending my hand and shaking his hand, and thanking him for letting me present my business proposition on behalf of the Eagles. My handshaking took me all the way around the giant conference table. And after shaking each banker's hand, I felt that I needed to say something to break the cool reception I was getting. I introduced myself, and then I said, you know, I know you were expecting a man to represent a football team. But I want you to know this, my dad who owns the team always wanted boys too. But all his children are girls. So I am my dad's only son. With that one liner, I broke the ice. They chuckled and I went on to present a well-planned, thorough and detailed analysis of how the Eagles would pay back the money if the bank agreed to grant the loan. I secured the bank's commitment that day. In my book, Briefcase Essentials, which will be out in a few months, I describe in detail the story about starting a relationship with bankers. It's worth reading. In answer to the question, what do you need to do to start a banking relationship? Introduce yourself to as many loan officers as you can in the bank that you use for your personal use. Identify a banker that you feel you can really relate to. Talk to them generally about your business. And every time you visit the bank, go over and say hello to that banker you have picked out and make sure to leave them with something that identifies your company your business card, a company brochure, or even a sample of your product if you have one. Remember, the more memorable you are, the better chance you have to get your foot in that door. So be memorable. Look for part two of this series on building financial relationships to grow a small business, where I go into great detail about how you should present yourself and your business story to establish your credibility. And don't forget to check out my book, Briefcase Essentials, on my website at www.briefcaseessentials.com, where you can read part of the actual story. And remember above all, 
The key to establishing credibility is to know your business and know yourself.